Okay, so today I'm really excited because we have another one of our mamas here to share her real story of her daughter, Abby, and the transformation that she's gone through. So in just a moment, I'll share with you all of the details of her story, but just as an overview, Abby started with phonological awareness scores at around like the 45% accurate. So a little bit less than half of the time, she really wasn't able to hear the sounds and language. Her brain just wasn't connected those dots to like 95% accurate when she was done. Her reading scores went from the 25th percentile to the 53rd percentile, and then spelling made some massive leaps too. So in numbers, you know, she went from the 12th to the 15th, but she had another 10 words that were spelled phonetically correct, where she, if she would have had that the pattern, you know, like if it was EE instead of EA, it would have been 70% uh, or the 70th percentile for her spelling as well. So just massive, massive growth for this little bug. So first of all, I want to say hi to you, Shanna. Thank you for being here. Yes, love it. <laughs> um, would you mind just sharing with us a little bit about your journey? What did it look like for you and Abby before we met? Okay, so um, we started the program when she was about nine. I am dyslexic myself, so I noticed things well, in all of my children, but mostly her. Um, she really, she could read very little words. She knew most of the alphabet, um, but not by sight. Um, and even now there's some letters that she can still kind of look at and be like, oh my gosh, what is that? Um, but that was the majority of the time was just struggling over every sound, every letter, um, even numbers as well. And um, reading was just not something she enjoyed. She, I She didn't like hearing me read. She didn't like audiobooks. Um, she would, you know, just almost throw a fit every time we I have her listen to one. And um, so it was just a struggle all around. And I, of course, don't know why it was so difficult. If it was just hard to hear and listen to and just made her brain go crazy. I don't know, but, um, she just didn't enjoy it at all. And so, um, yeah, it was just a struggle. And coming from that point of view, I just didn't want that for her. I knew that, um, it's a struggle and you have to work so hard to overcome every little obstacle. And thankfully we homeschool at the moment. And so, um, at least I didn't have outside influences telling her, you know, anything. So, um, I was just super encouraging, saying, we'll get it, well, no pressure, you know, um, just trying to find those little things that I needed to do as far as curriculum or programs. Um, I did tutoring when I was little. I did um, all, all kinds of stuff. And of course, I, in my circle, I have friends that have their girls and or children and programs and just watching them from the outside, like the parents know nothing. They don't know what's going on, how to teach them Um you know, what's the problem, you know, whatever. So I just knew I was just waiting for that thing to come around that would be what I was looking for. So that's awesome. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I think are really amazing. And I want to dig further into because mm -hmm. they're important. So when you were trying to homeschool and she's not wanting to listen to audiobooks and anything that's related to reading is painful, like what was that like for you as a homeschool parent to try and work with her at that point? Oh, it's hard. You almost feel like you're failing them because you can't find that thing to help them learn. And I have three other children that um, are on the spectrum a little bit, but as far as, you know, they're just able to comprehend or enjoy learning. Um, I have two history buffs that love reading and learning and stuff. So it was just super hard to know that, okay, what is it for her that's going to work and how can I get that to her <laughs> and make her successful at what she's going to do? And yeah, it's, it's terribly hard to hear it's to watch your children do that, but she's great in so many other things. She's such a physical child that, you know, I would try to relate something to that, to, you know, you know, um, like the mindset that we're always doing, like, okay, you just taught yourself how to do a backbend. Like no one did that. You did it, you know? So it was kind of just trying to re relate those things back to that and just waiting for that thing again to like click for her, work for her. Oh, that's awesome. So, I mean, I think you're bringing up some really great points. Like oftentimes when people are homeschooling, they're not just homeschooling one child, they're homeschooling multiple children. And so when you do end up with a child that has 
dyslexia, it can require a lot more of you, you know, like you have to spend a lot more time, whether you're having to support them with the homework or you're reading some of the text to them, or you're, you're Mm -hmm. doing things that are above and beyond what you might have to do for other children. And so it can really take a toll on like, not only how much time you have to spend, but then what you're able to dole out to other children too. So I think it's just a really great point that like, it's, it's not just hard on that, on that kiddo. It's kind of hard on everybody. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. The whole picture. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that I think you said that's really powerful is that, you know, others that didn't really understand what's going on. Like, what would you say your understanding is now, like after being involved in this process and like going through this alongside of Abby, like how much more has your understanding of things changed or what did you appreciate about that experience? Um, gosh, I would have to say just the, the whole program in itself is a different way of looking at dyslexia. Um, first and foremost, this like that we weren't born with those neural pathways and that it takes work and certain types of like education to get that to grow. And that was something I never, I mean, my 40 years of life, I've never heard that before. And so, yeah, for sure, just the the whole process of it. Like, I don't remember ever doing a lot of the program that you've developed um, and it being so simple. Like that was one thing too. Um, Like you're just always, you know, pushed with the rules and the things to remember and taking that out of the equation completely has made it so much easier, even just for me, just to be like, it's not a rule. It's a pattern. Remember, like, this is this, this is this or whatever. Um, was definitely a huge, I mean, just, yeah, the whole thing is different than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> or knew it yeah, to be. which I, I and I think it's it's kind of fun too to recognize that it doesn't have to be all day long and it doesn't have yeah. to be, you know, like this very rule based because a lot of the dyslexia programs truly are very rule based and yes. the, the brain does not learn rules very well. I mean, it can probably hang on to maybe four or five rules and then everything okay. after that is like I can't memorize that and let alone try to apply that every time, but the brain is able to hang on to patterns and it does Mm -hmm. that quite well. And so if we can help the brain to recognize the patterns in different words, like, boy, that can be an automatic thing. So super, super great distinction there. I appreciate that. Um, So let's talk about like, uh, so did Abby have any other things that were going on for her? Did she struggle with attention? Did she struggle with memory? Did she struggle with behavior like related to, I know you said frustration, but what else did that look like for her? Um, yeah, for sure. So I never really had her evaluated only because, I mean, it's just a, a way to, I don't know. I, I know her well enough to that. I know what to do and what not to do. Um, but yeah, she could only really sit for maybe five or 10 minutes to do any sort of school. Um, everything was frustrating, even math. Cause I mean, for the most part, I was okay with numbers. And so I was just like, okay, why aren't you okay with numbers? <laughs> like, cause it should be something you're okay with. But, um, but yeah, math was just something she couldn't remember. Like she even now is struggles, but does so much better with retaining the patterns and the memory and stuff like that. And it allows us to um, fo- like focus more on the patterns. And so, um, but back to the question, yeah, she definitely, I, I would say she's a, a very well-behaved child, but yeah, the frustration was almost instant. Like, I don't know if it was just a buildup of, okay, I have to do this and I can't. And so it would just immediately turn into a struggle at school. Um, or, or not, but, uh, it definitely was the memory was there or not there. And, um, I can't think of the other question you asked, but yeah, it was just definitely always a struggle memory wise, um, attention wise. She just would rather run a mile than (laughs) sit down and do anything. (laughs) Yeah. Which I mean, again, like if you're, if you're the person responsible for providing instruction, that's a challenge because right every time oh, yeah. you're met with this, like, I don't want to, I don't feel confident. And it's just very, very hard to get learning to move forward. And so let's kind of shift to talk about now, like 
she's made some humongous progress in phonological awareness and reading and spelling. Like it's all massively shifted. Like, will you talk about what that's looked like on the human level? Like what's different for Abby? It is completely turned around. Like it is it, a whole new child as far as learning at all. So she is reading books on like, I can just tell her, Hey, go read three of your green books. Cause we're doing the beanstalk books. And okay. so I, I get them out and I'm like, okay, these are, you know, and they're all progressively harder or whatever. And so, okay, you need to read two green books and today you need to read, uh, you know, two red books and she'll even say, okay, can I read them out to you? Yep. Read them out loud to me, or you can read them to yourself. Like she just has so much more freedom to do and understand things. And so it's, it's amazing to see that. And just like her confidence is, I would almost say like a hundred percent because she doesn't ever really get frustrated now. And if she does, she'll be like, okay, I know this is so-and-so. And so I need to slow down or whatever it is. Or I can say to her, Hey, you just, you know, guessed at that whole word. Let's try again. And she'll be like, Oh, okay. Where before she'd just be like, you know, huffing and throwing her head back and putting her head down or saying that she has to go to the bathroom or excuses or something like that. And at this is not there anymore. And even now she'll, um, so I lay her workout every day for, for the next day. And a lot of times she'll just be like, I already did my school. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you already did your math and okay, well, let me see it. Make sure you did it right. She does it right. And so wow. it's just, it's a new love for learning, which is exactly what I've always wanted and want any of my children to know is just learning is always going to be there and that it's fun and that you can enjoy it. And now they'll listen to books on uh, to at bedtime and they love listening to books in the car. Like it's just a complete turnaround from what it was before. I can read for hours and they don't tell me to stop. <laughs> and so it is just amazing her I'm guessing comprehension now is just, uh, you know, through the roof to where she can enjoy it and um, you know, and comprehend it and not feel so frustrated to whatever was, I don't know if it was just noise before and, or what, but, um, now she just loves it. Oh, wow. I mean, it's, what's beautiful is that for most people with dyslexia, there is an average or above average intelligence most all of the time. So these are yeah. really, really smart people that have the capacity to do so much, but there's just this one little piece that's difficult that we just have to unlock. And so once you do, it's amazing to see that like, oh, it wasn't behavior. Like this wasn't, they weren't trying to be difficult. It's just that it was right. so frustrating because they couldn't do it. And so now that they can, it's just beautiful to see like, oh my goodness, I'm actually doing my, my work early. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Like what a change. Yeah. Yep. And now she loves reading signs when we're driving by and you know down the street and hey mom, does that say wrong way? You know, it's like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Great. incredible. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, what would you say were some of the big turning points for her? Like I, you know, for most people, especially if they have a, a more severe case when they start, like it can be a little bit slow at first and then, you know, things really start to take off. Can you remember any moments in her journey where she just had like a light bulb moment and she was like, oh, wow, look at what's happening for Abby. Um, I, I feel like on every module, she would have that to a, a level. Um, there was, of course, things that were easy for her or easier and then more things that were difficult. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like every module, there was something that was just like, OK, I get it. And that makes it so much easier. And and she would enjoy whatever we were doing. Like she was fantastic at, at not throwing too much of a fit. You know, after that initial like, OK, this is every day. <laughs> we're not going to stop for, you know, anything. <laughs> Yep. She finally was like, okay, this is just what we're doing. And this is school. And so I'm going to try to enjoy it or whatever. But she just, um, I mean, there was some things, some modules that she liked more than others where she just like, oh, can we do more of those? <laughs> you know, I feel like it was module six for some reason, but she just was like, oh yes, let's do some more of those. And I'd be I like, okay, it. the 20 minutes is up. And she'd be like, oh, can we do one more? Oh wait, I think I have some more ideas or, you know, whatever. I love it. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Mm. And it's just, it's super tremendous to see 
the literacy pieces unlocked. So, you know, instead of continuing to struggle, because that can happen where the intervention doesn't really get to the root causes. And so, you know, if there's areas of the brain that are inactive or, you know, like it's just not responding to the visual or the auditory system, then you just kind of keep going on and mm -hmm. not able to make those connections and you might be able to memorize more sight words but in terms of like actually reading new words and actually reading on your own and developing those skills of independence and confidence it's like no so have you seen I think you said like you noticed some shifts in her confidence and her independence but like from your perspective what's been the best part about her growth um yeah, besides just the confidence, I think just knowing that or knowing that she has the tools and that she's been able to demonstrate them and that I don't always have to, you know, because you go from mom, what's this word to now her at least trying and she might get it wrong, but she doesn't, you know, crumble under it. And she'd be like, oh, wait, that isn't it, is it? And I'm like, no, nope, let's try it again. And just the, I think the, the power that's in the tools that she's learned is just mind blowing. Like it's just turned around everything for her. That's incredible. Well, and I do, I want to just honor you throughout this process too, because it's not a magic wand. <laughs> like it's not like, oh, hey, do do the program and poof everything. Like it, it takes right. work and it takes consistency and repetition and, and actually a, a very good attitude on both parent and child's part like <laughs> you know if, if it's completely this and you know we're contentious on both ends it really is difficult and it can kind of put the brakes on a lot of things and so I, I do want to just kind of give you guys credit for not only showing up but taking the coaching and showing up to celebrate and you know being in that space to to increase and grow yourself so I mean is there anything that you would say to others that are like oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, like, how do I, how do I do this? If I myself am dyslexic, or I don't have any background in education, or like, how on earth am I going to tackle this? When I feel like I'm not sure about my own skills in this? Like, how was that for you? Um, well, first, I would definitely say that if they're already to you in this program, then they're already have the desire to teach their kid and to want the best for their kid and they're their kid's biggest advocate and knowing i mean you've seen your kids struggle and you know get you know the worst grades and even maybe comments from school or children or family members um and so you're wanting the best for them and this is just like anything is going to take work and yes, it's hard. And yes, it's hard to be consistent. And yes, it's hard to have, you know, start that schedule. And yes, your kid's not going to like it at first. And yes, you're going to have to find a million things to incentivize them. And, but it all works. And, you know, you're not going to have to give them a dollar every day for the rest of their life. Like at, at some point, they're going to stop wanting those incentives because what you've taught them and what you, they've gained is now replace that. And I've seen it with three of my kids. Like, yes, we had to start with a bin of toys <laughs> and, you know, say you could pick something for every word you get right, you know, and now they didn't even ask for anything. Like they, I mean, it's just amazing what knowledge can do for anybody, much less your child that you love dearly and no one's going to take care of better than you and advocate better than you. I couldn't agree with you more. And it's, it, it's something that sometimes stuns people like, well, wait a second, you don't have an interventionist that's working with this child every day. No, you've got mama bear, you know, and right. sometimes daddy bear and, you know, grandparent bears, but right. we, we are the ones who know, I mean, like, you'll know with just a raise of an eyebrow, what she's feeling or what she's about to do next. And like, those are behaviors that you've come to know through spending a life with her. And I think right. if you have the tools as a person who's willing to show up as a person who's willing to be consistent, because you know that this impacts her whole life then it's it's a win-win right so it's for sure I couldn't agree with you more yeah 
Oh, that's awesome. Well, I I can't thank you enough, Shanna, for being here and being willing to share your story. It's just, it's super fun. And, you know, like we, we ask clients when they get amazing data and they have done the work and like, oh gosh, will you just share the story of like what it was like for her to go from like, I don't like this at all to like, now I'm reading on my own and could I read one more of those and I'm doing my homework early. And like, those are the things that are truly intangible and like, how could you possibly put into words how awesome that is? So I think right. the best way is to just hear the story directly from you and say like, what's her real life look like now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. It's been amazing. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Well, I thank you again, Shanna, for being willing to share your story with Abby and congratulations to you on all the hard work that you've done. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> Got it.